Covering news where you live, this is 5 News. Well, thank you for joining us here today. I'm Joe Ellison. We have the latest news and weather where you live. Mauricio Torres could be sentenced today. Remember, he's the Bella Vista father. A jury convicted this past week in the murder of his six-year-old son, Isaiah. Jurors heard testimony on Friday, and they're set to return to the courtroom today on Tuesday when they could hand down that sentence. Now, you'll remember also that Torres went on trial for this twice before and was found guilty each time. The first time, a judge decided some of the crime happened in another state and would have to be retried. Then a mistrial after someone attacked Torres during sentencing. Now Torres was convicted for a third time last week of murdering his son back in 2015. He faces life in prison or the death penalty for the crime. When the sentencing is handed down, we will have that information at 5newsonline.com. Now before we get to other news of the day on this Tuesday, let's get a check of the weather with meteorologist Zach Scott. And Zach, it looks like another beautiful day for us. That's right, Joe. So again, back to back days where we're talking 60s and 70s outside and we've been dealing the last couple days with these mid to higher level clouds who are rolling in from Oklahoma west to east, filtering out some of that sunshine. We'll still look for some breaks of sun to mix in 60s and 70s and then a 10% chance of a sprinkle. I am adding in a little low rain chance as a warm front lifts north this afternoon and early evening. Moisture will start to return and with that we could maybe get a sprinkle or two outside of that again, prepare for a warm day and a dry day overall. We are adding in uh, the winds picking back up. It was a little breezy yesterday. Winds today gusting 20 to 30 miles per hour across the region. Those are going to go up as we go overnight. Southerly flow picking up warmer, more moisture rich air continues to stream in ahead of our next storm system. 10% chance of a stray shower. We're mostly dry. We're windy, much warmer, upper 50s, low 60s to even some mid 60s will be what we find for temperatures to start tomorrow morning. That'll be 20 20 plus degrees warmer than where we are this morning. Again, spring like warmth building in will lead to spring like thunderstorms. We're going to have a chance for rain and thunderstorms mainly during the first half of the day. Sunshine, breezy, dry conditions coming in in the back half of the day. The rain rolls out. We'll bump those highs back into the upper 60s to mostly 70s. Again, 100% chance of rain increasing as we go through the morning hours tomorrow. Rain will build out towards the west during the overnight hours. It'll start to move into eastern Oklahoma 5, 6, 7 a.m. As we go 8, 9, 10, 11 a.m., that's when that rain rolls into western Arkansas. We're tracking a line of storms. When we get these lines of storms, our health threat goes down, our wind threat goes up. Damaging winds will be the main concern for us. And then also we'll have to watch too. You can never really roll out a brief spin up on along these leading edges here. So we'll have to watch that too. And then a few pockets of hail. The rain will get out of here by early afternoon. Look at that 1, 2 o'clock. We're clearing out sunshine's opening up. We could see gusts again 25 to 40 miles per hour overnight. We could see gusts again tomorrow 30 to 40 plus miles per hour. Joe. All right, thanks so much, Zach. Now, more news for you at the state capitol in Arkansas. Lawmakers filed a bill that aims to make sentences harsher for many caught trafficking drugs in Arkansas. Both Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders and Attorney General Tim Griffin say they support it. It's now been filed in the House and would create life sentences for drug traffickers who cus whose customers die from an overdose. Now, in a news conference last week, the governor said she believes that new penalties would deter drug dealers from selling fitness in Arkansas. There are a few other bills we're keeping an eye on for you this week as well. Arkansas's General Assembly is charging full speed ahead as the Senate is expected to pass some prominent bills. Senate Bill 71 prohibits discrimination by public entities. House Bill 1161 introduces excused absences related to pregnancy or parenting and allows for makeup work. House Bill 1196 is the governor's work requirement push for those utilizing public assistance. Of course, stay with 5 News as we continue to update you throughout the week. And we're getting more reaction to Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders' signature education reform bill. This was filed last night as Senate Bill 294. The Arkansas Learns bill would introduce sweeping changes the governor spoke about last week when she unveiled her plan. Now, among those changes, better pay for teachers and a school 
school choice program. Senator Greg Letting from Fayetteville raised concerns about the 144 page bill moving through the legislature too fast, saying Arkansans need more time to review the sweeping changes included in the plan before lawmakers vote. Well, a group spent out time outside the governor's mansion protesting parts of the education reform plan this week. The Pay Our Educators Coalition says it wants the governor to slow down and take another look at the issues surrounding school vouchers. It also says it doesn't like that money is getting diverted from public schools. Why would public tax dollars go to private schools that have no oversight? They can discriminate against any child at any private school that they want, but now they want tax dollars from everybody. Well, Sanders' first proposed Arkansas Learns back in October as part of her election campaign. And a Washington state cattle rancher has been able to put a dent in the amount he owes Tyson Foods. As of January 24th, the Springdale protein producer has received more than $63 million in payments from Cody Easter Day's company's bankruptcy cases. Now, if you recall, the rancher pleaded guilty in March of 2021 to defrauding Tyson of $233 million dollars and Seagal Properties LLC of Washington of 11 million. Easter Day now owes Tyson just over $177 million. Dodge is recalling more than 300,000 Ram trucks in the U.S. because of a potential fire hazard of an electrical connector that can overheat. Drivers are warned not to park the vehicles inside. Dodge says it knows of at least six fires that may be related to the problem, but also say the risk is minimal. Now, this recall covers certain Ram 2500 and 3500 pickups and and Ram 3500, 4500, and 5500 Chase's cab trucks from the 2021 through 2023 model years all have 6.7 liter Cummins diesel engines. Well, dozens of stray and lost pets will soon find a new home. That's thanks to a donation to a Fort Smith animal shelter. The Arkansas Colleges of Health Education donated land to make this happen. Five News reporter Michael Wilson has the story. For years, animal overpopulation has been an issue in the city of Fort Smith. That is something that we're working with the city on. For the last six months, the Animal Haven, the city of Fort Smith, and Arkansas Colleges of Health Education, or AIC, have been working on solutions to pound this problem. Now we have about 150 dogs and about 25 cats. That is above average. We're seeing a increase right now. To help the shelter house more animals, AIC is donating some of its land. We're donating this five acres of land to the Animal Haven. It was a, a great, great donation. We're really appreciative of the donation. The new shelter will be located off Roberts Boulevard. We're excited to do this for this entire community. As you know, the um, existing facilities uh, needed to move um, and the new facilities will be expanded and larger than uh, what they've had before. There will be at least 150 spaces at the new shelter for animals. So we're uh, really excited to be out there, be a part of the college and a uh, college atmosphere. Uh, to be able to bring that to Fort Smith is a, is a great, great thing. Well, that was Micah Wilson reporting. Now, construction is not expected to start until summer. Once complete, though, the shelter will be more than 15,000 square feet. Well, thank you for joining us here today for some of the top news and weather where you live. I'm Joe Ellison. Make sure to catch up with us again right here tomorrow for more.